Hi, I'm going to show you how to do the session The Way of the Program, which is part of the UpMax Intro to Python course. Um, and I'll walk you through the exercise. I'm not going to go through the through the theory, I'll be just answering the exercises. So exercise one is about some general knowledge about Python and the Python interpreter, and that's discussed here. I'll do them soon, and then we need to run a Python script on a max. Right, so we can do that, we can do that. Alright, uh, this is part of the section getting it to run, which is the first section where we just try to get code to run on a max, um, and it's the second uh, session of that. Um, yeah, so let's go to, so we need to do one dot one two four five six nine. Let's Let's take a look at the book. Hmm. So we need to go to session 1.1, one one. sure, that's section 1.1, one one. there's a section 1, the way of the program, so it's named after the chapter. And there's some text, sure, we can read that, but I'm not going to do I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to give you the answers. So I guess the questions are at the bottom there. Is that correct? Do I really need to do this? Read the following sections. Yeah, we need to do in section 1 to 12 to exercises 1, 2 and including 5. Sure. Let's just um, let's do it. Write an English sentence. But, uh, so I'm going to paste this in some kind of text editor so you have it in there. Let's make it a bit bigger. There, write it. But incorrect. With understandable semantics. Um, I want a milk, please. There. This is a sentence that uh, people would understand, but the syntax is incorrect. It's incorrectly spelled. Um, milk, I please. Milk, please. I want is a sentence that has the correct syntax. Um, but it has semantic errors because it's not the right grammar. Next one. Using the Python interpreter, type 1 plus 2, then hit return. Let's, see, let's just copy it here. Using the Python interpreter, type 1, and then hit return. Let's, take, let's do this. Let's do this side by side. Um, I use Python on my local computer here. That's, that's just fine. So I need to start Python. Python or Python 3 for me. I need to type 1 plus 2. Sure, and then hit return. I did Python evaluates the expression and then shows another prompt. Mm -hmm, there's some text. Experiment by answering different expressions and recording what is displayed in the Python interpreter. So, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 asterisk 2 is this, 2 times 3, so that's a multiplication. If I do double star, we get power, so 2 to the power of 3. Double check, 2 to the power of 4. That would be 16, and that's correct, 532, yeah. Alright, well done. Um, can do something funky maybe, like let's take 2 to the power of 0.5. Will it give us the square root of 2? Yeah, it, it does. Next question. Type 1, 2, and then hit return. Alright, I can do it like this, huh? It's a bit bigger. Let's get it back. There. Type... No, you stay there. Yeah. No, you stay there. Alright, type 1, 2... <coughs> there. Type 1 and 2 and then hit return. Great. Python tries to evaluate the expression, but it can't because the expression is not syntactically legal. Instead, it shows the error message. In many cases, Python indicates where the syntax error occurred, but it's not always right. And it doesn't give you much information about what is wrong. So for most part, the burden is on you to learn the syntax rule. In this case, Python is complaining because there is no operator between the numbers. 
See if you can find a few more examples of things that will produce error messages when you enter them at the Python prompt. Write down what you enter at the prompt and the last line of the error message that rep Python reports back to you. Well, let's, let's do 1, 2, plus, or plus 1, 2. Those are all syntax errors. Um, let's do print. Let's do me okay, sure, message. Print 1. That's another error, that's a syntax error. Uh, print 1, 2. Maybe this, let's do this. There, right now it continues. I need to do this bracket close. One there. I also need to do a bracket close there. Sure. Yeah, so the, um, there are error messages you can get. Um, let's do hello. Hello, that's different. Hello. With a single quote at the end. And um, maybe hello. With a space that works. And let's do plus three. That doesn't work. Let's do this. That does work. All right, so we can do stuff. Exercise four. Type print hello. Let's do it. Oh, that's a print hello. There. Well, unexpected. I remove the space. Python executes this, which has the effect of printing the letters hi hello. Note that the quotation marks that you use to enclose the string are not part of the output. Now type hello and describe your result. Okay. There, and now type hello and describe your result. Hmm, so when I use double quotes, it turns it into a single quote. And if I do single quotes, it's turned into single quotes. So this means if you do hello like this, you get no quotes. If you do the single quotes, you get no quotes. If you do with double quotes like this, you get single quotes. And if you do it with single quotes, you get single quotes. The reason is for these things is it will just echo what you've done. It will repeat what you've said. And Python uh, prefers the single quote. So double quotes, these and these are exactly the same. Um, but uh, because they are both pieces of text, and it will show it's a piece of text by adding the quotes, else it would be displayed differently. Um, this ha would be a variable called hello. All right, exercise five. Type cheese without the quotation mark. Sure, cheese. Yeah, indeed, it gives me an error name. Cheese is not defined. This is a runtime error. Specifically, it's a name error, and even more specifically. It's an error because the name cheese is not defined. If you don't know what that means yet, you will soon. All right, that's uh, great. Yeah, it's a runtime error. This cheese should have had a value. It's a variable. Um, yeah, sure. So I found out. So I've done these exercises, and now it's time to start a runtime script. Um, for that, so I need to. Let's do this in a text editor on Upmax. Let's do it. Login Rackham. Oh, let's do it like this. SSH dash X reshell at Rackham dot Upmax dot UU dot SE. Password. Let's take a look if it's well documented. So there are text editors here. Nano is recommended as a simple text editor. This is how it looks. This is how you start something, right? I think I can do it now. Then in the book, do exercise six. Okay, oh shit, I need the book. Let's go to the book to exercise six. Chapter one, twelve, exercise six. Type that at the Python prompt and hit enter. Describe what happens. So we need to create a Python script with this content. All right. Well, let's do on Rackham. Let's start an interactive node. And um, so I don't 
clog up the system although it, this doesn't look very heavy to me but let's just uh, get it started and then I need to type this this will probably show me the answer oh I need to load the modules too so let's do that it's not very important which module I load but I will load, load the one used in the course I think 3.10.8 let's take a look there there there, 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 there it is I start Python now on Upmax. There I type this with Ctrl Shift V, you need to add V for a terminal. And this shows 42. Now, now create a Python script with that, that content. Well, or let's do it. I use uh, touch my script, my script.python. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to use nano. nano take a look how to make a script so I use that that, that nugget oh, I, I do need to look to leave Python and here we do nano my script dot Python mm -hmm, so that's that now editing a script I need to put this into it with control shift V it's in there I remove this space else we'll give an error. I'm gonna save with Ctrl O, enter, and I'm gonna quit with Ctrl X. There. And now I need to run the script. So how do I run the script? Where can I find where to run the script? So this is th about text editors. Sure, but it doesn't tell me where to run, how to run a script. Um, I guess it's in the book. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna scroll up a bit. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Scroll up your first program. Foremost, pair syntax error, debugging. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is not how to run a script. Let's take a look for the word script. So you can run a script like this graphically. Mm -hmm. So that's not what we need. So it doesn't tell you, um, in this case, how to run a script. Well, then I'm I'm gonna d show it. So to run a script, you do Python, and then the name of the script. There you go. And we see that our Python script does nothing. All right, back to the exercise. But now we need to make the script to this. Sure, we can do that. Copy. So you need to add print in front of it. There. Save with Control O. Control X to exit. And now I run the script 42. Alright, so in a script you do need to print to print stuff. So in the interpreter it will give you 42 always. But when you run it from script you do need to say print. Let's take a look at it. Whenever an expression is typed at the Python prompt, it's evaluated and the results automatically shown on the line below. A script is different, evaluations of expression are not automatically displayed, so it's necessary to to use the print function to make the answer show up. It's hardly ever necessary to use the print function in immediate mode at the command prompt. So from the uh, so if you use the interpreter you don't need it. Alright, so I've showed you how the chapter called the way of the program and where we've ran a Python script. Um, I've talked you through the exercise a bit and discussed the theory that's for you to read. I wish you a very good day. Bye.